I've been eating a healthy whole plant food diet for a number of years. Many of you would even consider me an expert at it. But even I got myself into a little bit of vitamin trouble. I'll tell you all about it. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. You know I'm all about helping you to live the healthiest life you can all with food, eating healthy whole plant food just like I've been doing for a number of years and I try to help you find the easiest ways to comply with the diet without spending the rest of your life working on it. And many of the questions I get from new people are about nutrients. How do I ensure that I'm getting every little bit of nutrient I can so that I'm living the healthiest life possible? Well the good news is you don't have to worry about it with a lot of nutrients. If you eat a well balanced variety of whole plant foods, you're going to be getting all the nutrition you need. But there are a couple exceptions to that rule, let me explain what they are and how you you can track them for yourself. We've got a video already on the channel you can click right here that talks about all the different nutrients that you need to be considering or not considering as you take on this new plant-based diet. But a lot of people who are transitioning to our way of eating are concerned with getting vitamins and nutrients and minerals, the iron, the calcium, the vitamin A, the vitamin C, the vitamin E, all of these things that are a lot easier to get from the food than two exceptions, vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Those ones do not come from the food at all. You cannot reliably get them from your food. Some people are like, oh, you can get vitamin D from a certain kind of mushroom if you do this fancy thing to it or some other thing that might have the vitamin B12 like seaweed. Some people are like, oh, you can get it from, no. Those are not reliable sources of vitamin B12. The most reliable way of getting it is by taking a little pill once every couple of days. I always tell people they should take a thousand micrograms of vitamin B12 every other day just to make sure they're getting enough of it. A thousand micrograms is way more than you need. The recommended daily value is like 25 micrograms. But it isn't all absorbed is my understanding from the plant-based doctors and if you do get an excess you just pee it out. It's not one of those vitamins that's toxic in higher quantities. So taking a thousand micrograms of vitamin B12 every other day is a good practice. I personally fell off that practice. Here I am recommending everybody do it and I'm thinking to myself, oh, it takes years to get low on vitamin B12, it's no big deal. But I like to test my blood once a year for all the different things just to make sure I'm not letting my guard down too much. And it turns out I was. And there are a couple of vitamin B12 tests you can get. You can get a regular blood B12 level test. But I've heard a lot of the plant-based doctors say that an even better test for vitamin B12 is homocysteine. And so I tested my homocysteine, which is elevated in the event that your B12 is low. Low. You want your homocysteine to be anything under 11.4 and mine got all the way up to 11.8. So yes, I was low on B12. I was getting lazy with taking it. There's really no excuse. I was just staring at the bottle and not actually taking the pill every other day. So that was dumb. Fortunately, I didn't have any symptoms that I know of, but it's very dangerous to be low in vitamin B12. You do not want to be there for long. So fortunately, I found it, got the test, my homocysteine was elevated, and I diligently took that 1,000 microgram vitamin B12 capsule every single day for one month. For about one or two months, somewhere in there, I went and checked it again, and it was down to a 9.1 from that elevated 11.8. Remember, anything over 11.4 is no good. Is it still probably dropping with me taking my vitamin B12 regularly now? Probably. I don't know how low it goes. I don't know when it stops dropping and because I don't care anymore. I did the test. I proved that it was working and now I just need to be more diligent about my vitamin B12. I learned the lesson for myself and now hopefully you don't have to for you. Once a year, it's good to tell your doctor or do it on your own like I did that you want a few blood tests, the few run-of-the-mill blood tests that you regularly get as part of a physical. Here in Arizona, I don't know if this is the case for you, but we can go to a website called requestatest.com and we can order our own blood work and then we can have the plant-based doctors review it. You can go to Dr. Michael Clapper's website and he has a video on there where he breaks down all the blood results and what they mean if you don't have access to a doctor who can do it for you. It's a good practice not to get into taking all kinds of crazy blood tests for yourself and trying to interpret that data. That's not a good idea. But if they're these simple blood tests that just tell us our regular annual physical kind of information, then a video from Dr. Michael Clapper explaining all that I think is a really good option. And that's what I did. I learned a lot and now I know what my blood work should more or less look like. The next thing we vegans eating a plant-based diet need to worry about is vitamin D. We cannot get it from our food. Most people get it from dairy products and garbage like that. There are other products that are enriched with vitamin D. I wouldn't focus on those because they're usually processed junk food products anyway. So we need to think about vitamin D in a different way. If you eat like us, there are two ways to get it. You can either go out in the sun regularly, religiously, consistently and get enough sunlight to where your vitamin D should be just fine. Maybe you go outside for 15-20 minutes a day, 10 minutes on each side, depending on if you're in Phoenix in the dead heat of summer, you probably shouldn't be out that long. But you experiment 
with your climate, some places in the winter time like right now, it is very hard to get any vitamin D from the sunlight reliably, so you can't do it. You've got to supplement. But for those of you who do have access to good sunlight, try it that way first if you want to. It takes more time than just swallowing a capsule and being done with it. But if you want a more natural approach, then make sure you're going outside and getting the sunlight. And then you've got to keep yourself honest. Okay, you're going outside, but are you really doing it enough to where you're getting your vitamin D into the regular range? You can do a vitamin D blood test from your doctor or the website that I just mentioned and you can make sure that you are in the normal range. These are the things that a good plant-based doctor can help you with but if you're sharp you can take it into your own hands and, and investigate a little bit. In the summer here it's so hot that I don't even want to look out the window okay so I don't get that sunlight. It's right there, it's readily accessible, and I'm still pathetic about it. So here I am getting my blood checked once a year just to make sure everything's fine, no big deal. And you want your vitamin D to be over 30, whatever the unit is. Anything from 20 to 29 is insufficient, and anything below 20 is deficient, which is a real problem. You don't want to be deficient on your vitamin D. Mine was a 19. I was deficient. And I was surprised because I thought I was getting outside enough, I wasn't supplementing. Well. Turns out I need a supplement. As far as the brand of these supplements for D and B12 that I like, I think any big name brand is probably going to be reliable. Try to find a vegan product. I personally use Pure Encapsulations, not because I did my own due diligence on the product, but because that's what they sell at the True North Health Center, and I know Dr. Alan Goldhammer would have done his due diligence, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just use what they use, and that's that. I'll leave a link to our Amazon store down below where you can find all the things we buy on Amazon, including these supplements, and you should be all set. So for about one month straight, I was taking every single day one 5,000 IU vitamin D capsule, a vegan one, and I got my level all the way up to 33 into the optimal range in just like one month. You can get it back into the regular zone pretty easily if you have the data that you need to determine that you ought to do it. So for vitamin B12, just to summarize, make sure you're taking a capsule. Don't rely on some food product, some seaweed thing to get your vitamin B12 unless you really, with 100% certainty, know that you're getting it. For vitamin D, make sure you're getting out in the sun or else take your capsule like everybody else. This information does not mean that a vegan diet is deficient. There are plenty of people out there eating a standard American diet that are also low on vitamin D. Vitamin B12 deficiency is very common in people who still eat a standard American diet. So don't go on thinking that we're eating some kind of deficient diet. And I can tell you right now that's not true. So if people are in your ear telling you other things, just ignore them. Tune out the noise. Make sure you're taking care of your own health and the people you love as best you can and you should be just fine. Don't let your vitamin B12 and D get low. Eat a healthy, well-balanced variety of whole plant foods. Get your blood checked from time to time and you'll be in great shape. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.